Gloria Steinem is a feminist, a journalist, political activist, and a hero to millions as an outspoken and controversial leader of the women's liberation movement. And now she's the subject of a brand new HBO documentary called Gloria in Her Own Words. What we are talking about is a revolution. Gloria Steinem spent four decades leading a revolution for women. When she graduated from Smith College in 1956, women had few opportunities. We are made to feel that we are nothing unless we are standing beside a man. Back then, women were not allowed to run in the Boston Marathon or even have credit cards without their husband's permission. Females are supposed to stay home, have kids, and keep the house clean. As a young journalist, Gloria Steinem helped change the tone when she co-founded in 1971 an outspoken magazine called Ms. There really was nothing for women to read that was controlled by women. Ms. was instantly successful, selling out 300,000 copies in just eight days when it published the names of women who had abortions. It made domestic violence a national issue by showing the face of a bruised woman on its cover. And long after she retired as its editor, her legacy continues. You understand it's not a role exchange. We're not trying to, to do to men what men have done to us. We're trying to humanize both roles. But Gloria Steinem didn't always win, even with some women. The women's livers are sincere, the homosexuals are sincere, but they want to change the supreme law of our land. And in 1982, the women's movement failed to add the Equal Rights Amendment to the U.S. Constitution to ensure that women had the same rights as men. It was a setback, but not one that would deter Gloria Steinem from her lifelong work. And joining us now is Gloria Steinem herself. Great to have you with us, Gloria. Good morning. Good morning. So what made you do this after about a decade, not really being in the media spotlight, what made you come forward and do this documentary? Uh, well, if Sheila Nevins at HBO uh, and uh, these great documentary makers, uh, Cunhart McGee, tell you you should do it, you start <laughs> to think. So, I, and also I thought it's just important that we tell our stories because they are imperfect, mm. you know. Otherwise, what was imperfect about them? Do you think? Oh well, tons. I mean, you, you know, I'm certainly, uh, you know, a festival of, <laughs> of imperfections. Because otherwise, I feel that the the media uh, distances people, and you come to you come to feel you can't do anything. Only people at the top can do it. It disempowers rather than empowers. And also, I I wanted to show how far we've come in 30 or 40 years. Uh, to say so people can think okay where do we want to be in 30 or 40 years because this movement has just begun and what do you think where where are the big obstacles for women going forward and where are the big challenges well we're still struggling with a, a basic human right called reproductive freedom that is the right of an individual to decide when and whether to have children that is terribly important for women obviously because it's the greatest determinant of whether we're healthy or not, poor or not, educated or not, uh, in public life or not. And as we can see from the opposition here to reproductive freedom, that is the idea that the government should make these decisions, uh, you know, that's, we're, we're not there yet. Uh, we uh, now have uh, more or less the idea and certainly approval of equal pay, we don't have it yet. But still the work that's done in the home, the, the work of nurturing and taking care of invalids and family members and so on, which is about 30% of the whole of productive work in the country, has no economic value. And you could give it an attributed value. You would do that? Yeah. Well, you, it's, you know, other countries have begun to do this. You know, we're, listen, we, <laughs> the, we like to think that this country is, is the best, and in many ways I think it is because it has hope, which is very important. But in terms of representation, for instance, political representation uh, in our national legislature, mm -hmm. we're 70th in the world, 7-0. Well, and know? many people <laughs> will look at other countries and say they have literal female leaders from premiers to presidents right. and the United States hasn't hasn't been there yet. Right. I, I want to talk a little bit about your life and, and what we see in this film. And one of the things you say re you regret doing is, is going undercover as a Playboy bunny. And you say you still regret it to this day. You regretted it then at the time. Uh, you did this obviously to write a bunny's tale. Mm. What did you regret about it? 
Well, uh, some things I, I don't regret because it did improve working conditions, just as one example. You know, we're right across from the what was the Playboy Club here mm -hmm. now. Uh, the waitresses had to have internal exams and Wasserman tests for venereal disease, and they were told that this was a requirement of the state. Hello? For a waitress, it wasn't at all, you know. Mm. So that changed. Some things changed. And it kind of exposed it as tacky, which it really was. The Playboy Club was profoundly <laughs> tacky, I have to say. And, and, and people did not get the promised wages, so they had a tough time keeping people. Gloria Steinem, we appreciate you joining us this morning. Thanks for being here. Thank you.